This section is over polynomial division, which includes the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. Let's first discuss division, and more importantly, discuss factoring versus division. When we talked about the factoring section, clear back in chapter R, I introduced this to you here. I said, what's the difference between an example saying factor 24 and an example saying divide 24? Well, we learned that when we said factor 24, you get to make your own choice. What did you want to factor it by? You could have chose to write it as 4 times 6, or as 3 times 8, or as 2 times 12. And there is no indication as to which one that you had to use. But when the instructions say divide 24, you should tell the instructions that you don't have enough information. Your response should be by what? So if the instructions say divide 24, it needs to include what you want to divide it by, what number here specifically. And so let us review a factoring example and then learn why factoring does not work for every example and so why we need polynomial division in the first place. So let's go to that review example. This covers the last section that we just did, which was over graphing polynomial functions. One of those steps of graphing polynomials is to find the zeros or find the x-intercepts. And so I have this example here. My function f of x equals x to the third minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. I suggest you pause the video and see if you can come up with the correct answer. Okay. So we know to find the zeros or to find the x-intercepts, we just set our function equal to zero. Now the way that we know how to solve functions which are higher than degree two specifically is by the factoring method. So let's factor this. The way to factor something with four terms is to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group my first two terms and my last two terms. In my first two terms, we have x squared in common. If we take that out, that leaves me with x minus 2. My middle sign is a negative, so I need to factor out a negative. In my last two terms, I have a 9 in common. So this is like factoring out a negative 9. So negative 9x divided by negative 9 leaves me with a positive x. And positive 18 divided by negative 9 leaves me with a minus Two. Remember, if this sign here in the middle is negative, that switches all of my signs back there. Now, this is still equal to zero. Now, in your factor by grouping technique, we have two terms, one here, one there. We notice that we have the grouping of x minus 2 in common between these two terms. So if we take that out, that leaves me with x squared minus 9. So that finishes up our factor by grouping technique. But if we look in the second set of parentheses, we have a square minus a square, so that's a difference of squares. So we can factor that farther. So copying down my x minus 2, and then factoring this into the conjugates, x plus 3, x minus 3. And now I can actually set all of these factors equal to 0. Since it's multiplied and equal to 0, I can use my principle of 0 product. My first one gives me the solution of x equals 2. My next one gives me the solution of x equals negative 3. And my third one gives me the solution of x equals 3. If the problem specifically asked for the zeros, then this is the correct format. If the problem specifically asked for the x-intercepts, then we should put it in intercept or order pair format. So 2, 0 is my first intercept, negative 3, 0 and then positive 3, 0 are my last intercepts. So this is where my graph intercepts the x-axis. So this reviews how to find zeros, how to find x-intercepts, and it reviews your factor by grouping technique. Now if we wanted to utilize this, we could go ahead and graph these points and move on with other steps of graphing the polynomial functions. So now that we've done this, Let's go ahead and move to my second example, which looks almost exactly the same, except for my function is just different. 
So again, we're trying to find the zeros or trying to find the x-intercepts of this function. So what we do is the same method. We just take our equation, our function, and we set it equal to zero. Well, it has four terms, so it makes sense that we would just do the same process. Group my first two terms and my last two terms. In the first two, I have a common factor of x. If I take that out, I'm left with x plus 2. My middle sign is negative. I don't have anything in common in my back two terms, so you might just think about factoring out a 1. And so when I take out a negative 1, that leaves me with 5x plus 6. So here's where you hopefully see that something is not going to work out. For our factor by grouping technique, our parentheses absolutely must match because that becomes a common factor. That's what happened in our last example. They matched, and so it was our common factor, so we factored it out as a common factor to be here. Well, when they don't match, then our factor by grouping technique does not work. Well, the only way that we know how to solve this at this time is by the factoring method, and the only factoring method that somewhat fits this is the factor by grouping technique, because there's four terms. So the problem here is that it doesn't factor. So what happens if it doesn't factor? And that's why we have to go back to this battle here. So usually we prefer factoring because there's no mandation that goes with it. We just get to factor it by whatever we want. But what happens if it doesn't factor? It doesn't use any of the factoring techniques that we know up until this point. That's when we have to move on to a process of division. And so now we see why we need to know what polynomial division is in the first place. Before I actually get into polynomial division, let's review just long division. And this is just like you did back in grade school. So to get us in the right mode, we're going to do one of those grade school examples. We have a long division problem here. We want to long divide 51,372 by 9. A different way that I can say this is just writing it out as a division problem. Or this could also be written out as a fraction problem. So any way we see this, if we want to compute this without using our calculators, we're going to have to do a long division process. When we do that, we are going to have to substitute the first number in our division problem or the top number in our division problem underneath our box or underneath our chicken coop here, as you may know it. Not necessarily the largest number, but the one that is first or the one that's on the top. Then the one that's in the second place behind the division symbol or the one that's underneath the fraction, that's the one that goes outside. So I want to take the 51,372 and divide it by 9. Okay, to review my long division process. The first thing that we do is we have to figure out what does 9 go into. Does 9 go into my first digit? It does not. So we might put a 0 here as a placeholder. Does it go into my next two digits altogether? And yes, 9 does go into 51. Not evenly, but it does go into it. 9 goes into 51 five times because 9 times 5 gives me 45. So that's the way we do it. We figure out how many times it goes in up here. We multiply them. 9 times 5 gives me 45. And then we subtract them to move on to the next step. 51 minus 45 gives me a 6. Now your long division process just keeps repeating. We bring down the next digit, 63. We figure out how many times does 9 go into 63. It actually goes in there evenly. 9 times 7 gives me a 63. So when I subtract these here, I get 0. Continuing on with my process, I bring down my next digit of 7. How many times does 9 go into 7 evenly? It does not go in there at all, so I need to fill in with 0. And then if you want to officially follow the process, you know 9 times 0 gives me 0. 
So when we subtract here, we're still left with 7. Or well, we really could have skipped that step. And then when we bring down the next digit, we get 2. And 9 times 8 gives me 72. So this comes out evenly with a remainder of 0. So if we want to long divide this 51,372 by 9, we know that that gives us the quotient or the answer up here. Now, we shouldn't include this zero up front here, so get rid of it. But I did put it there in the first place to make sure everything was aligned. You want to keep everything right aligned so you know where you're at in the process. So my final answer to this problem was 5,708. That's my quotient. Okay, let's just say we wanted to check this, again, without the use of the calculators. So we just need to reverse the process. Instead of dividing them, what we need to do is we need to multiply them. We take our 9 out here, which is our divisor. We multiply it by our answer up here, which is our quotient. And that should come up with what we were dividing by in the first place, 51,372. Now, I'm not going to do that check here, but I'm just writing this out to help us out with the next process. So I think I have reviewed everything that I need to review here. So in the next video, I'm actually going to get into polynomial division.